to uh, all parishioners of St. Margaret, St. Thomas, and uh, any visitors who may be joining us this morning, again, on this uh, beautiful Monday of this most special week of the year, Holy Week. It's uh, my privilege to, to join y'all and lead y'all through this reflection, and uh, hopefully it's a good start of Holy Week for you, again, a special week. So uh, let us begin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of his disciples, and the one who would betray him said, Why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priest plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a uh, article in last week's Morning Advocate, and um, while I don't remember all the details, actually I went back to try to look for it, and as luck would have it, you can't ever find that one article. You find everyone else, but you can't find that one. But the article was about... Um, a lady, and I don't think it was here in Baton Rouge, and let's just call her Maria. She was Hispanic, and she worked hard. She had worked uh, for quite a few years, little by little, saving up money for her her daughter, who was going to be turning 15 before too long for her. I think we pronounce it Quinciera. Uh, it's close. Um, and uh, she had worked hard, and uh, she had saved up $15,000 for this. And she was married, and she came home, one day after work, only to find out that the FBI had raided her her apartment, not because she had done anything wrong, but because they um, suspected her husband was involved in uh, drug drug distribution and some other legal activities, and they assumed that she was associated with that. And so they raided it. They took many things, including her money, whether she had $15,000 there at her apartment or whether uh, it was in, in some bank account that they had seized. But um, she had, because of her association with her husband, had uh, been been uh, deemed to, to be uh, maybe possibly guilty or involved with it. I think um, maybe perhaps you have uh, been uh, been in a situation or maybe you know somebody who's been in a situation where you've maybe been an innocent bystander or maybe in the wrong place at the wrong time and have somehow been associated with a crime or some other illegal activity. Maybe it wasn't even a crime. Maybe it was uh, something that you were associated with or perceived to be associated with, um, something that maybe was a a part of a movement or a position that you had had taken uh, that was unpopular or even worse, maybe threatened um, the the legal authorities, or not the legal authorities, but people maybe who were in power uh, an individual, an organization that were threatened because of that. Maybe you initially planned on just going there or being part of it just to get information without even taking a position. But sure enough, uh, as it, it oftentimes happens, um, just being there associates you with it and you're seen as a, a suspect or um, a person of, uh, uh, of interest. And um, you have an X on your back and all of a sudden now you become maybe the hunted, so to speak. I think today's or well, today's gospel, um, Jesus returns to Bethany. It's 
in John's gospel, it's a chapter later uh, from when Jesus had raised Lazarus. And um, it's uh, something where uh, he, he comes and among the numerous messages that we see, we come to learn surprisingly maybe that Lazarus now is <clears throat> on the chief priest hit list uh, because he really represents evidence of Jesus's miracles and maybe who Jesus says he is. That hit list seems to be getting ever longer, doesn't it? We, it includes people like the, uh, the man born blind who we were, uh, heard about a few weeks ago and Bartimaeus the blind beggar, the deaf mute um, who Jesus had healed, um, the, the leper, uh, the the, ser the centurion servant, and even the, the little girl who sometime back in, in scripture uh, had Jesus had brought back to life. These are um, people who, again, represent uh, evidence that uh, of Jesus's miracles, that uh, Jesus is who he says he is. And even though they themselves maybe aren't avid disciples, they uh, represent um, the evidence that really proves beyond a reasonable doubt that Jesus is who he says he is and that he has the authority to do what he does and really discredits some of the arguments that the leaders are making and as, as such, they uh, are threatened because of that. The, uh, maybe maybe these, these, uh, these people, these who, people who have been healed, maybe they feel like um, uh, they, they now realize that their lives maybe are in jeopardy. Maybe they have fear because of that and maybe even regret a little bit being healed now because their lives are in jeopardy. But as we know, uh, such is the price of the cost that we pay to be associated with somebody who stands up for the truth, who stands up for what is right, even or especially when it, uh, uh, it involves people who may want to silence them and have the power to silence them. I think in our society, going to church, we're, we're, we're guaranteed that right in our, in our constitution to go to church and to, to worship freely. But I, I believe if we look beyond that right, we look beyond just our right to profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, standing up for uh, the truth, uh, living the moral standard, uh, defending it can be hazardous to our health. And uh, I think quite often we want to, um, I think for many of us, we want to live in relative obscurity. We don't want to, uh, we want to mind our own business. We want to own our own little piece of uh, uh, corner of the world, so to speak, and just live in peace and harmony. We, um, I think we, we, uh, we want to, uh, we, we, we don't, we want, our modus operandi, so to speak, is just to, uh, to, to not rock the boat, to not challenge, just continue to, to, to live out our, our faith in a very simple way uh, and, and not upset any people. But I think uh, maybe when those opportunities, we may, we may not seek out those opportunities to defend the moral standard, but when they knock on our door, can we uh, respond to those uh, knowing uh, that being associated uh, with, with Jesus uh, may be hazardous to our health and may, may cause us some problems. I think um, in our world today, we, we clearly have those opportunities and um, we're called to, to seek those out uh, and, and to, to, to respond to them, to be courageous, to trust uh, that being associated with Jesus and to proudly say that will guide us along our way and will we'll protect us and we'll be fine with that. Maria, back to our story, uh, Maria uh, never got back her full $15,000. I think according to the story, she got back about 10000 And sadly, she was not able to have uh, the uh, this big celebration for her daughter when she turned 15. But as we know, <clears throat> this is the cost of um, sometimes doing the right thing, of, of, of following and being associated uh, with Jesus Christ. And some of us have, or maybe we'll experience that in our own lives. As we prepare to celebrate this Holy Week, Holy Week we are reminded again that um, this is really the culmination, the final chapter in Jesus' uh, life here on earth. Um, 
certainly uh, up to his resurrection, up to his, uh, his crucifixion, part of that, and that suffering was part of that. But it's also uh, a time for those who followed him to embrace his message and continue to follow that. We know that Peter denied him, that Judas betrayed him, and that all the other apostles, aside from John, of course, were nowhere to be found. They were not at the foot of the cross. Maybe we too um, have failed to, to follow Jesus, failed to associate ourselves with him when really the chips were down, when we were called to, to stand up for, um, for what is true and what is right, even when our lives maybe were threatened by it. Like Peter, let us commit ourselves again to, um, to being associated with Jesus, to following him, and to uh, in, indeed, uh, again, um, um, learn to follow his way regardless of the price. Again, I wish you a very happy Holy Week, uh, and I pray that it'll be something special, even in spite of uh, what we're going through now, that you can make it special, um, and that uh, there is resurrection on the other side of this. Thank you again for joining us, and God bless you.